Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another video. In today's guide, we're going to be focusing on setting up your Destruction Warlock ready for patch 8.3 Arena. In this guide, we're going to be including an update on talents, essences, Azerite choices, trinkets, and the new corruption mechanic, finishing it off by covering your rotation and playstyle inside of Arena. Kicking things off, let's begin with talents. Destruction honestly doesn't have that much variation with their talents, and they remain much the same in 8.3 your standard setup is going to look like this. The only real deviations that we see in talent changes are on the level 75 and the level 90 row. Whilst Mortal Coil is a standard for destruction and an integral part of their kit due to the synergy with Havoc, it can often be the case where Coil just won't cut it defensively, especially with teams now utilizing the Gladiator's Spike Trinket to its full capacity. This can result in Demonic Circle being a very valid pick. When you would want to pick it though depends on a few factors. If you're playing MLD specifically, or well with a mage in general, Mortal Coil and Polymorph share a diminishing return. This can often then result in it being very hard for you to find good times to coil, especially against melee cleaves. The other time you should consider Demonic Circle is when up against certain melee cleaves, namely those where you just can't survive unless you build some distance and reduce the damage you take. Demonic Circle also adds added value on Z-Axis maps, but again it's niche situations where you're going to value that mobility much more than Mortal Coil. The talent on the level 90 row you should consider changing in some matchups is from Supremacy to Roaring Blaze. Supremacy of course is key to those big Chaos Bolts, allowing you to spend shards and build up damage whilst your Inferno is active. But we've all been there, where teams just completely line you for the duration of your Infernal, or just stop every single Chaos Bolt imaginable. It's times like these where you want to simply respec Roaring Blaze. Roaring Blaze adds an extra damage portion to your Conflag, which is of course instant, buffing your overall damage marginally. Outside of these two changes, there isn't any other adaptations you should ever consider making. Next up, we're going to move on to PvP talents. In regards to your PvP talents, your default should look like this. Now, yes, there's only one talent. As destruction, you're going to need to be swapping the other two, depending on the game. Let's take a look at our options. Obviously, first, you have Focus Chaos. This is the sole reason for those big Chaos Bolts you see, increasing its damage flat out by 65% you never want to swap this out, no matter the circumstance. Now to pair up with our Focus Chaos, we're going to see what we're up against. If it's heavy physical damage dealer, so think Windwalkers, Warriors, Ferals, Rogue, then you're going to need Demon Armor. Whilst if it's a caster, you're going to want Never Ward. Having the ability to reflect spells or even ensure you land a Chaos Bolt can open up a lot of options in both surviving and securing damage. Then there are two offensive options for your last slot. Entrenched in Flame is going to be the standard. This is great for 2v2 or 3v3 when paired up with a class not bringing a consistent route. Entrenched in Flame applies a route to your conflag, meaning you can lock targets down and then stop them lining you, which is vital to help you to secure casts. Our other offensive option is Foul Fisher. If you think you're not going to get value out of the route, say for instance it's just a melee cleave training you, a root isn't going to do much, you can't really build distance anyway. Then the mortal strike effect from Foulfisher is going to be a lot more impactful. The other situations you'd want to pick up Foulfisher is when your team already brings an abundance of roots. So again, think mages and windwalkers. Okay, so you might be thinking, what if you're facing both a melee and a caster, and want never ward as well as demon armor? Well, if this is the case, then you have two options. Number one is to drop an offensive option and just take both Never Ward and Demon Armor. The second option though is to pick up the Conflict and Strife Major Essence. This provides you with Demon Armor Baseline, allowing you to then still pick up an offensive option. This however moves us nicely onto our next topic, which is Essences. To start off, let's talk Major Essence. For this, there's two options, and we already know one of them. 
Conflict and Strife should be taken in the scenario we just mentioned above. You want demon armor and you don't want to drop a talent for it. But if that's not the case, then you're going to want Vision of Perfection. This essence is just crazy on destruction. When selected as a major, Vision of Perfection will have a chance to summon a random infernal. This gives you the exact same bonuses as your own, including the synergy with Grimoire of Supremacy. This infernal lasts for 35% of the duration of your own. Up next, Minor Essences. And for this, we of course need three. As with level 75 neck, you now have access to three minor slots, as well as your major. Our first minor is an easy one. It's going to be the opposite of the essences we mentioned to pick up as your major. So, if you have Conflict Major, pick up Vision Major, and vice versa. Vision of Perfection will reduce the cooldown of your powerful Infernal, as well as giving you some bonus versatility. Conflict and Strife, on the other hand, just gives you a huge bonus to versatility, making you a lot more durable. To pair with either Conflict or Vision, you're going to of course want Breath of the Dying's Minor effect. When selected as a Minor, this deals insane damage, the highest out of any Minor by far, acting almost as an Execute. On top of that, you're also healed for 50% of the damage it deals. But if that wasn't enough, Lethal Strike also gives you 10 added Corruption Resistance, allowing you to wear even more overpowered Corruption. For our final slot, the best option is going to be Ancient Flame, the Miner of the Crucible of Flame. Simply put, this is the best passive damage beside Lethal Strikes. Although it can be dispelled, it still does good consistent damage throughout of a game. Now let's get to Gearin. In this section, we're going to be covering stat priority, trinkets, Azerite, and also everybody's favourite new addition to the game, Corruption. Starting off with stat priority, nothing has changed. You still want haste and mastery above all else. With versatility being okay, whilst you should look to avoid critical strike. Trinkets are an integral part of gearing, and for destruction you've got a few options. The standard go-to is going to be a badge. This is just great for destruction. It adds a huge chunk of intellect that you can combine with your Dark Soul to land those huge bolts. To combine with your badge, the best option is going to be the Vita Charge Titan Shard that drops from Raden inside of the new raid. This trinket gives a huge passive boost to your favoured stat haste, whilst also a proc providing yet more haste for both you and your team. There are a few other situational options though, one being the Gladiator's Emblem. This is the best defensive option you can pick up for those times where you just need a little more added survivability. And the last trinket worth mentioning is going to be the Gladiator's Spike. This, when combined with your team, has some very niche uses, being able to essentially use your enemy's corruption to your own gain. Azerite for destruction heavily revolves around one trait in particular, Flashpoint. Flashpoint is hands down the best trait for destruction, offering an extremely high amount of haste with ridiculous uptime, so you're going to want free flashpoint no matter what. But it's also a must to have one crashing chaos. This increases the damage of your chaos bolts once infernals popped. But more importantly, and why this trait is a must, is the 15 second cooldown reduction onto your infernal. So to combine with your free flashpoint and one crashing chaos, there are a few options. Chaotic Inferno is nice to have one of. Heart of Darkness is some good passive stats and Bursting Flare gives you some good mastery, so just any combination of these three traits is fine. Focus more though on getting that free flashpoint and one crashing chaos. There is one last thing to cover when it comes to gear, and that's 8.3's new edition of Corruption. Corruption is of course, as we all know, extremely RNG at this stage in the patch. Having perfect corruption or multiple to choose between is just not all that likely. So what we do is list the best corruptions and you can mix or match or just use the corruption that you have. The best three corruptions right now are Infinite Stars, Twisted Appendage, and Gushing Wounds. Out of these three, the best is Infinite Stars. However, the tentacles from Twisted Appendage deal good damage, but slightly more RNG based. In regards to Gushing Wounds, this corruption is insane, but it's just very rare and it's a low corruption value. Ideally, if you had all the corruption to pick from in the world, you would want as many of these as you can possibly get. But yeah, nobody's that lucky. So if you don't have any of these free damage procs, or you even have some corruption resistance left to spare, then getting haste percent is going to be the next best thing. Due to its synergy with Flashpoint, it gives you ridiculous haste. And even the haste proc, mastery proc, or mastery percent can all be decently okay. 
As for any other corruptions, it's not going to be worth the corruption cost. As always though, don't go over that 39 threshold when it comes to Arena. So that's going to be everything you need to know about setting up your character. Now let's get into rotation and playstyle, starting off with your rotation. Destruction's rotation is fairly simple, although getting it off correctly is the challenge, with how much emphasis teams put on stopping Chaos Bolt, but there are a few rules you can follow. Number one is to keep Immolate on as many targets as possible. Immolate does underestimated damage as well as procking your flashpoint and even giving you shards. Number two, to help do this you should look for opportunities to land Cataclysm on stacked up targets. Number three, you should also look to always be using Conflag on cooldown as to not cap on charges. Conflag deals good damage, generates shards, gives you backdraft charges and even roots targets if you're playing entrenched in flame. Number four, with your shards that you've generated you're looking to of course spend them on Chaos Bolt whenever you can. And number five, if you do ever run out of shards the best way to generate them is with Incinerate and Conflag. Moving now on to playstyle. In this section we're going to cover how you go about playing in 3v3. Most importantly as destruction is good offensive cooldown usage. So your Dark Soul and Infernal. These are both very strong cooldowns that are heavily respected by all enemy teams. So popping cooldowns just to see your enemy retreat is often something you see less experienced Warlocks do consistently. To try to prevent this though, you want your enemy to either have no way of running or wait until they heavily sacrifice something to do so. Some examples of this could be popping Infernal or Demon Soul during a Rogue Mage's setup or even when yourself or a teammate is low. This can quickly cause counter pressure or relieve heavy pressure onto your team. This brings me perfectly onto our second key playstyle for destruction, and that's to be disruptive during enemy setups. Warlock actually has some insane disruption. You've got double coil with havoc, counter spell, fear, shadow fury, and even roots. Look to utilize these crowd controls when your enemy is doing a setup. This can halt their pressure and in turn allow you to get Chaos Bolt casts off during them. Another really important key aspect of destruction is going to be finding the opportunity to land Chaos Bolts. This can be done again in a few ways. You can utilize fear as a way to bait and interrupt or you fear the target away so you can ensure you land the bolt. Another great way of using your entrenched in flame is to root a target away from kick range. Or alternatively, who's trying to attempt to run, you can use the root to buy you much needed time to ensure that Chaos Bolt cast. You can also use some of your disruption offensively to land casts. Mortal Coil with Havoc into bolts, Shadow Fury into bolts, or even land one from your Infernal Stun. Our final playstyle you need to always be ready to adapt to is to rotate your defensives. So utilizing your unending resolve, half stone, coils, or even your gateway to survive. All right then guys, that's going to be it for our 8.3 destruction guide for Arena. Be sure to leave any comments or questions you still may have below. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.